Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and our reel of the day that we're going to be working on is an Abu Garcia Black Max 10. The 10 is the smallest size. It's uh, it's for streams, ponds, and the like. Uh, this is a lower capacity, lower line weight type of a reel. So this takes, uh, for example, 140 yards of four pound test. So uh, good for pond, bass fishing, crappie, and so on. We're going to take this reel apart. We're going to show you how it's made. More importantly, we'll show you how to service it and how to keep this reel fishing for a long time to come. Now, Luke has sent me in a couple of reels. They've all been very nice. And uh, we're going to try and do a video for him on this one. So we start by taking off the exterior pieces and parts. And as I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting the videos and uh, well, you can choose. I post all kinds of videos, everything from saltwater big trolling reels to, well, smaller reels like this in the spinning size and low profile bait casters and the like. While we remove the spool, we have to remove the shim washer now. Those are pretty tight. Uh, there's usually two or three of them on here. Those control the height of the spool. And I just, uh, just did one of uh, Luke's reels where he's got an issue coning which means that the line is gathering high on the reel, and uh, that is solved by adding shim washers. If it was gathering on the bottom of the reel, it would mean that the reel is going up way too high, and you have to lower the spool, and you would remove one of those. Well, these are always kind of fun to take off, but eventually you will get them off. And these are clear or transparent, so you want to watch what you do with them. One of the best ways I watch with what I do is I put my pieces into a parch tray. My parch tray is the bottom of a uh, fast food container. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to organize your pieces and parts as they come off. And uh, whatever it is that uh, suits your needs, please do it. But make sure that you organize. It's so easy to lose a lot of these small pieces and parts as you're working on a fishing reel. And there's nothing more frustrating than trying to find them when they've jumped off your uh, your desk or somehow otherwise gone missing. Well, next we want to remove the rotor. I just noticed that this is a reverse threaded rotor nut. That means that it comes off by turning it in a clockwise manner. And uh, you need to note that. If you're trying to remove a piece like that and it's not coming off easily, just turn it around and try and uh, take it from the other side and sometimes that will work. Well, I don't uh, didn't get all of the, the words on where Luke does his fishing, but every one of these seems to have collected an awful lot of dirt and debris under the rotors. And uh, well, that's one of the reasons why you should service a reel on a regular basis. I'm going to take the WD-40, a penetrating oil. I don't care which one you use. I'm going to just squirt the seams. I'm going to work that bail back and forth so that it flips nice and easily. If it does that, there's no need for you to remove the bail wires and springs and the like. If you do, well, just remember that uh, you could get yourself in a little trouble there if you're not familiar with the bail springs. I seem to have become a little bit of an expert in it because, well, I get a lot of reels in where somebody's taking the bail off and can't figure out how to put it back together again. Well, here's that indication of what we were talking about. There just seems to be a lot of dirt in the lake that collects under here. And uh, in this case, it's uh, kind of embedded itself on that little carrier. Well, let's take the handle off next. Turn your handle. If the back end or the non-handle side is turning, it means that you have a through screw and that has to be removed before you can pull the handle out of the other side. Sometimes, like the reel I just worked on, even though that cover is uh, not spinning, there is a screw underneath. So it's always nice and safe to check what the position is before. All right, this one has an override to it. You can kind of see how it's gathered to the collar here. And when you move your override back and forth, this should trip back to release. And when you move it forward, it should allow you to 
back pedal, the reel. A lot of people like that function on a reel. All right, let's uh, let's see if we can't get the cover off, and then we'll take care of the rest of this. I want to take the cover off before I remove the pinion gear. That way I can hold this assembly together here, uh, or at least I'm confident that I should be able to hold that assembly together. Just checking this. It looks like there should be a screw here for a bump cap, but I'm not seeing it. I don't know what's holding that in. I think it may have broken off. All right, let's uh, let's take this screw out. That may release it. And then let's take the other two out. When you're going to take this side plate off, what you want to do is flip that to the other side. That way it won't interfere with your removal of it. And when I do this, I like to just put those screws on the, the table. And I still think that we have a screw under here. And I think we have a broken screw head here. So if that's the case, it's, it's always a little bit of a problem and somewhat of an annoyance here. And we probably would do best to go get the schematic of this. All right, well, yeah, it's, it's not a broken screw head as it turns out. It's just a pivot point. You saw how that came off. And you saw that that top screw on the other side, this one over here, is what held that cap on. Well, you needed to remove that cap. We have two more small screws here. To get to those, I'm going to use a micro screwdriver. The heads are too big for the others. I'm going to take the two screws that I have removed and put them in a the corner of a parch tray. Let's take the other two off. Now this is a good time to tell you take pictures. Pictures are great reference points when you're servicing a reel. It's very easy to get distracted. Just talking to Thomas, he came and picked up the picked up some reels I worked on. Well, I put reels down to go upstairs and kind of answer the door and return his reels to him. And uh, well, I almost forgot where I was with the reel I was working on. To avoid that, the best thing to go do is to take the pictures. And of course, I take pictures with videos. You don't need to do that. But take pictures. They're great reference points. All right, the four screws are out. This case should come off, as it does. And uh, well, here's the under underpinnings of the, of the reel itself. Let me make sure that the main gear goes back in for a moment. I'm going to wheel this down so that I can remove the axle shaft. There's usually a screw, yep, right there. There's a screw in the cross line block. You can see why this reel's operating a little tight. We have a lot of dried grease in this. And one of the things that's important when you're working on a fishing reel is to clean the old grease and debris out. I'm going to leave that right on the tip there. I'm going to put it right back in here so I acknowledge that that's the screw that it works on with that one, so I don't mess it up with some of the other screws that I've taken out. All right, with that out, we're going to clean all of this stuff. You can see that's probably the performance issue in this reel. We're going to inspect pieces and parts. We want to make sure that there's nothing damaged. And here's one that I kind of like here. There's a secondary drive behind here. So that should result in smoother operation. You have a drive here and a drive here for the oscillation system that can spread the uh, the strength, give you a little bit more smoother operation than directly engaging with the, uh, the oscillation gear. I'm going to take the stud to pull that out. Well, I was going to until I realized there's a puddle of grease on here and that other, that other one is screwed in. So always kind of take your time, don't force anything. We will remove this one. Now I will remove the oscillation gear. And you want to do that from a cleaning perspective. So we have all of our gears on the table now. And uh, I think what we'll do is we'll work on the bottom side, then we'll come up and work on this side before we complete. I'm going to spray the gears down with some penetrating oil to loosen the greases that are on there for cleaning. I'm also going to do that in the case here. Then I'm going to go in with the least abrasive cleaning that I can do. So it's paper towels and cotton swabs if I can 
use that. And you want to get all the old greases in. The old greases here are, can trap dirt and debris. They get in all the time. These reels are not sealed. And while well, chopping that debris is only going to lead to it becoming abrasive or coarse. And when it does that, it's going to start wearing on the pieces and parts. And you'll have a rough performing reel, if not a broken part. So get all the greases out of there. Turn your attention to the reel. And this is not uncommon for a main gear to have all of the greases puddled inside the teeth. And the reason for that is centrifugal force. It, uh, it just throws it off. As you spin, it throws it off. It gathers in that little crevice there. And that's what causes the puddling of the grease. It also is a way to tell you don't put too much grease in there because it's only going to get thrown off and wasted. I'm checking the teeth on all of these gears while I'm doing this. They're all in good condition. And uh, we'll go ahead and install that bottom again. A little bit of grease onto the post where the secondary gear goes. I've spun the, the bearing on this case. It works fine. I'm going to oil it. Please, when you do oil and grease your wheels, please use fishing wheel greases and oils. And then after we've inspected the teeth, we want to make sure that they get a nice coating of grease. And then we can go ahead and install this. When you install this, put the stud of this gear facing down after you've merged it in with the secondary gear. You can give it a spin, make sure that it works, and it does. You don't have to grease the back gear because you're getting grease on this and you're getting grease on the back side of the drive. So the smallest gear does not need to be. If you want to, go right ahead and do that. You don't need to do that. I'm going to clean up the crosswind block now. Make sure that the channel is clear inside. And then go ahead and put grease on that as well. Now at this point, I probably shouldn't put this one piece in, but I'm going to anyway. It'll probably fall out when I go up top to work on it. Again, take the pictures as you do that. And I, I just see right away that I should have put the tie-down screw in that oscillation gear. So let's go back and install that. I don't like leaving parts on my bench. They only tend to get bumped around. So let's leave these off for a moment. And as I mentioned, I think it's easier once you get the axle shaft out not to detach the spring here. If you need to detach the spring, this is where you take the picture. It's coned on the one side, it's it's on the other side of the cap. And we can go and remove the three screws that are holding that collar down. So the Black Max series has been out a while now. It's a nicely made reel. It's a midpoint, I think, in the uh, in the scheme of things. It's not a cheap reel, but it's uh, let's call it inexpensive. Not an entry level, but let's call it uh, uh, value priced, if you will, something like that. And uh, the ones that I've had, uh, I've enjoyed fishing with. All right, we're just taking a guess here that I'm going to be able to clear the pinion gear without disturbing the spring. If I disturb the spring, I've got the pictures going there. So I'm just going to lift off, roll over. As it turns out, when you take that off, you've got the hook for the spring. This is a good place to take your picture. Then this is just going to be kind of attached there. We're going to pull this whole assembly up. I'm going to see if we can't get that collar out as well. Take that spring out because I don't want it to shoot at this point. Take the collar out. There's some dirt in here, so I'd like to get the rest of that out. You have your dirt, and then we have our clutch, and you can see that clutch is pretty dirty there. What you want to do is just kind of mop off the dirt. Don't spray it with the oils. This is a friction-driven clutch, so getting the oils in there could become problematic. So we can lift. check this because I need to make certain that it fits in the right slots. I may have misinstalled that by one tooth. 
And if I did, I certainly want to take care as I put this back in. Yeah, I got it right. Sometimes you don't. Okay, here's your collar that can go back on. Seems to be a little bit of tarnish there. Let's get that out of the way. I'm going to remove the berry, remove the AR collar, clean this. We're going to clean that with a brush just to make sure we pull off all of the old greases out of the teeth on this gear. We want to install new grease and we want to take the old grease out. Once you're satisfied that it's clear, we can go grease and oil. The grease I'm going to use is a fishing wheel grease. It's pen precision wheel grease and I recommend you to use fishing wheel grease on all of your projects. Okay, took a moment to set up. Once you've uh, greased your pinion gear, we can go ahead and put the collar on for the AR device. That's the inside for the clutch. And we can put the bearing on. And then there's a little bearing washer that sits between the bearing and the spool that goes on the top of the stack. With that set up then, just go ahead and insert. Make sure that it comes into the bottom of the case. And uh, well, we're ready to put this other assembly on now, which has to do with the override and tie down. Locate your override. I took the spring out of my parts tray for this. The spring sits on the little stud on the side of the plastic carrier here on the one side. And then we need, and be careful with this, it's a spring, it can shoot. We need the hook side to go inside that and then just fold over onto the, the case. With that in place we have the three tie down screws. So let's go ahead and put that in place so we don't have to worry about that spring shooting. Overall, the Abu Black Max line, as I mentioned, is a, is a very dependable line. It's a name brand manufacturer, so uh, it's part of the Pure Fishing Group now, which owns Pan, and owns Fluger, and Shakespeare, and Abu, and Mitchell. It's almost a question what doesn't it own these days. But uh, this one's kind of positioned above the Shakespeare's, kind of below the Fluger's. Kind of on par with the Mitchells, I guess. All right, when you've done that, just give it a ride. Make sure it turns free and easy. It does. We're in the off mode now, I think, so the anti-reverse should hold. It does. Go ahead and flip that switch over to push that out of the way and make sure that you can backpedal the reel. So we've successfully reinstalled the anti-reverse uh, gears after cleaning them and the spring assemblies and the like. I'm going to set that to the off position because two things. It takes the switch out of the way of the case when I go to remount the case and it uh, leaves it in operation mode. Let's go reinstall the gearing then. We've got the cross line block goes next. Get a nice amount of grease on there. Let's turn that over. Get that located over the stud. Next up then is the gear. We've cleaned it and inspected all of the teeth. We want to do the same thing here. We want to get a nice amount of grease. Don't overload. If you overload, well, the condition that we saw earlier with it all puddled in the bottom and the back of the gear is what's going to result. So a good amount. What's a good amount? I don't know. But uh, a good amount, but don't over flood it. It'll serve no purpose. Mount that in there. Next up then is your axle shaft. Go ahead and remove the tie down screw and conveniently place there so I know where it belongs. Wipe your axle shaft off and then just a light coat of grease on there. Not, don't go crazy because when you put it through the pinion gear and the excess is just going to get knocked off there. Go ahead and assemble it by pushing it through the pinion gear and lining up the screw hole with the hole in the 
cross wind block. Once you do that, you come back with your tie down screw and insert that. And tighten it down nice and tight. You want to make sure that when you're doing this that you don't uh, leave it loose and create slop in the, uh, the cross wind oscillation. All right, next up then is our case. See, there's a little bit of dirt there I want to wipe off first. And just center your case and make sure that you have a nice tight seam all the way around. Remember, this one's going to hold the tie down on the bump cap. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get that screw that holds the bottom of the case and put that one in. Tighten that down all the way. And while you're at it with the micro screwdriver, you can go ahead and put that other stainless screw that's hidden under the rotor, put that in there to tie down the top. That'll keep nice even pressure on the case. That'll kind of keep it from buckling if you were to kind of maybe do it in a, a roundabout way. All right, now we want to get this piece here. I'm always concerned when you use these snap pieces. that you're going to break off one of those tabs. Oh, that one snapped in place nicely. You heard a nice crisp snap. There's your stud, which originally I feared was the broken end of a screw, but in this case it's a plastic stud holding it. Kudos to the designers here. And if it was April Fool's Day, I would say they're trying to make, make fun of me. All right. Let's put that last case screw in. And as you can see, the, the service on one of these takes about 20 25 minutes. It's a, a small amount of time to keep your, uh, your reel fishing for a long time to come. We've cleaned and oiled your, your rotor assembly. This came off in a clockwise manner. It's a reverse thread, so it goes back on in a clock, uh, counterclockwise manner. It's the opposite of what you're normally used to and how it spread, uh, screws and how it gets screwed on. Tighten it down, give it a spin, make sure it spins nicely. It does. Go ahead and get that tie down screw to stop that rotor nut there from wandering. screwdriver into some grease to and act as a temporary glue so that I can set that down. And uh, let's go service the spool. That would be next. So I guess we can put our click washers on. There's a metal washer that goes first. If you had any question about this, it's been a long time since we took these off. If you had a question about that, go back to your pictures that you took. That would be very helpful. All right, that's ready now. We can also take the handle and put the handle back on as well. I put the button right into the handle so I didn't lose that. Not necessary to do that, but convenient to know where it is when it is time to go reinstall. Go ahead and do this side. And we'll service the washers and the drag system. And we'll give it a give it a try, make sure everything came out well. I think if I'm not mistaken, this will have felt washers or Teflon washers in it. I guess that remains to be seen. There is a spring clip here. And the upper functional word on this is spring. It will shoot. So find something that uh, you can work in behind the gaps. 
kind of work it up. I'm trying to find the release point. There we go. And uh, just be careful. Hold your finger on it so that it doesn't shoot out and get lost. And then this is kind of interesting. It's probably only one drag washer in here. I do notice we have the eared washers right up top. And I guessed right, there's one felt washer in here. And there's nothing wrong with a felt washer. Up oh, there's two. There you go. I just came off the bottom. There's nothing wrong with the felt washers. Just have to be kept lubricated so that they don't dry and tear. To do that, I use oil. Some folks prefer grease. I think grease slows down the operation of it. Tends to clog. All right. So we've done it with the second one now. A couple of dabs of oil there. Gonna put the eared washer back in. Gonna go get the clip. Find the indentation in the spool. Put one side in, work the clip around until it is fully seated in the reel. And again, hold pressure because, well, it's real easy for these things to shoot. And that's speaking from personal experience. All right, your, your spool is serviced. The bottom of the spool is clean. Your spool shim washers are on. It's time to test now. Remember, we've already kind of oiled the bale. Let's give it a ride. Okay, well, there it is. That's your Black Max 10 by Abu. Nice little pond reel and uh, kind of a fun reel, ready to go fishing again. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. And again, if you uh, want to see more of these, please subscribe. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. To everyone, have a great day. I wish you the best of luck fishing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.